The Ramones, a legendary American punk band. The Stooges may have invented punk rock, but the Ramones brought it to the suburbs. Of course, there were many other classic punk rock bands of the 1970s, such as the Sex Pistols, The Clash, and The Dead Kennedys, who contributed in making punk music a genre that the young people could identify with as their own. The Ramones, though, they're one of those classic bands whose logo you see all over the place, even to this day. Their patches are on the cut-off jean jackets of every punk rocker. Blitzkrieg Bop was in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, for God's sake. Now, why would I have anything negative to say about this legendary punk rock band? Well, you see, uh, there was this thing that happened in the, the, the 1980s. Hip-hop. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. It was the new rebellion. It was hip. All the white rocker dudes were taking notice of what was happening in the black communities with this new form of music developing. Some artists in the rock world were so enthralled with this new genre that they decided to throw in their own little attempt at a little bit of rapping and hipping and hopping, and some were even super successful. To the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, light up a stage and wax a chump like a candle. Now, others, like Ramon's bassist, Didi Ramon, was such an abject, horrific embarrassment that journalist Matt Carlson summed it up by saying, Didi Ramon's standing in the spotlight will go down in the annals of pop culture of one of the worst recordings of all time. Stick around as Didi Ramon gets... Fast, 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 funky. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Alarm clock ringing, it's time to get up. It's time to do that funky strut. I'm a funky man, I got funky bones. I'm a funky man, my name is Didi Ramon. The year was 1987 and Didi Ramon was fresh out of a rehab center when he was introduced to the world of hip-hop. Though every rocker experiments with rap at some point, I feel like, most do it in their basements, never to be heard by human ears. D.D. Ramon, or rather his hip-hop moniker D.D. King, would experiment with this fascinating new music genre in front of the whole world. Embarrassing doesn't quite do this justice. This is... Literally as if somebody's dad heard rap for the first time and thought, oh, I get this. That's all they're doing? Shit. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and show them black guys how it's done. It's one of those classic situations where nobody was in the room to tell Dee Dee, no, do not do this. I'm your friend and I care about you and I'm telling you, this sucks. This does not even remotely come close to sounding good. You know, I've done a lot of these videos as of as of late where I'm reviewing bad albums and every single time it's the same situation. If only these people had true friends in their lives to give some honest feedback, they could have avoided so much humiliation. Well, nobody was there for poor Dee Dee, and on the heels of this single Funky Man, Dee Dee would release a whole ass album a few years later. Standing in the Spotlight was released in March of 1989, just a few months before Dee Dee quit the Ramones. Interestingly, unlike many rap albums of the time, Standing in the Spotlight didn't rely on samples or beats lifted from other albums. Instead, the record was recorded more like a rock record, with each instrument being played live, including a drum machine. And let's talk about that drum machine. This one piece of technology single-handedly dated the ever-loving fuck out of this album. And though Dee Dee recorded at the heralded Chung King Studios in New York, the production on this album is equally dated. I would say this album sounds like a product of its time, but even for 1989, it sounds old. Now, before we move on, I'd like to talk about some white rappers from the 80s who weren't embarrassing. The Beastie Boys. Chicken!
Though sophomoric, maybe, they clearly had more respect and talent for the hip-hop genre as a whole. Their flows were better, their lyrics, for the most part, were smarter, and the song arrangements would elevate hip-hop as an art form. There are so many Beastie Boys songs that are still played on rock radio to this day. I just don't know why Dee Dee thought he stood a chance to sincerely compete in this world that he clearly knew very little about. Hell, Beastie Boys' License to Ill had come out three years before Standing in the Spotlight, as well as Run DMC's Raising Hell. The bar had already been set for what would become the classic hip-hop era, yet in 1987, all Dee Dee can seem to shit out is this. I like rap and hip-hop. I like hardcore and punk rock. I like hot dogs, franks and beans. I grew up in far sales, Queens. Okay, the only way, the only way that this song doesn't suck is if it was like the first rap song that ever came out. But that had already happened back in 1979 with Rapper's Delight. Dee Dee had nearly 10 years to truly immerse himself into this genre and art form, but he merely dipped a toe into it and proclaimed himself, I'm the master of hip hop. He even started dressing like a rapper. He became a rapper for a while. One of the first white rappers and uh, started dressing in his rap clothes before he'd, <laughs> before he'd go put on his Ramones clothes. Dee Dee became one of the worst things that you can be in the punk scene. He was a poser. Now, let's talk about this album. It's a fucking mess. First off, it's one of those genre hopping albums, so one song might be a rap song and most of them were, but then you have these other songs that just sound like watered-down Ramones B-sides. The album starts off with Mashed Potato Time, and oh my god, uh, Dee Dee's rapping is just epic. I'm as cool as they come, you are the rappers that are run, I'm as strong as slice the low. Just that cheesy 80s rap cadence drives me nuts and instantly ages any hip-hop song. Don't battle me, cause I'm the best. I'm a rapping ace, so I'll pass any test. My name is Josh, and I'm so funny. Now watch my video so I can make money. And again, the quality standards had already been raised in hip-hop at this point. Most rappers had already moved on past those basic-ass early 80s rap flows. But not Dee Dee. He loved them. He raps like this throughout the entire album. Up my broken sneakers. Mr. Magic lets it out those speakers. It's midnight and the sun is down. I can do the funky strike. It's good as James Brown. He even manages to bite off some Grandmaster Flash flow. Paper, I was getting real edgy. And then the devil said, Yo, Dee Dee. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. And according to Wikipedia, he would spend about 20 minutes writing the lyrics to each one of these songs, and boy, does it show. Let's read some of his poetic lyrics from the song Commotion in the Ocean. I am a surf nut, and the surf is up. I'm heading for Sunset Beach. It's not far, not hard to reach. Where coconuts grow in palm trees, I can smell the breeze. Want to ride the waves? I'm all excited about the surf craze. I packed a picnic lunch. I hope I find a bunch of fun and clean sand. I want to get a suntan. I want to ride the surf at 90 miles an hour. Hope you don't get sour if you're freezing in New York that I followed the stork and headed to the coast to do what I love most. What the, what the, what the, what the, the, the guy wrote Blitzkrieg Bop. And sure, it may not be the most sophisticated song in the world, but it's a hell of a lot better than... I'm all excited about the surfing craze. I packed a picnic lunch. I hope I find a bunch. You can also tell Dee Dee is on his sober kick on this record because he's rapping about his refusal to drink because that'll hurt his ability to rhyme, man. You know, don't want to drink, man, because it'll cloud your mind. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, just a year earlier, NWA were saying, fuck the police. Uh, to say that Dee Dee had lost his stride when it came to being on the cutting edge of the cultural zeitgeist would be the biggest understatement of the 80s. There's also a song on this record called Poor Little Rich Girl, where Dee Dee is snubbing his nose at some drunken bar fly with an air of, I'm better than you because I don't do any of that stuff anymore. It's like the first annoying thing people do in recovery. They go a year without drinking, and now all of a sudden they think they're better than everybody else. Anyway, sorry, that got personal really fast. Then we get the song, German Kid. Now I'm sure if I told you that the bass player from the Ramones would one day put out a rap song, and half of the song he's rapping in German... You'd probably be like, what kind of weird dystopian time machine did you just come out of? But no, it happened. You see, when Didi was a child, his family moved to Germany because his father was in the military. Didi stayed in Germany until age 15 and apparently picked up a good bit of German. Now, ich spreche ein bisschen gut Deutsch and I can tell you the German he speaks in this song is some elementary, level one-ass German you would have learned by day four of German class. This is like if you live in America and you're like, yeah, I can totally speak Spanish. Check this out. Hey, como esta? Muy bien. Hasta luego. Yeah, see, I'm totally fluent. So we got lyrics here. Und ich finde es gut. I like it. Wenn Leute lacht, when people like laugh ich habe die energie i have the energy ich habe die ich habe die kraft i have the power ein hübsches menschen well, an attractive girl gibt mir ein kuss give me a kiss kein geld freue dann tag uh I, I, no money for the taxi take the bus um ich bin der könig i'm the king Von mein house, of, I'm the king of my house. Wenn die Kinder sind so loud, uh, if the children are too loud, schrei ich, I scream, get out, go out. And the fucking hook in the chorus is one of the weakest hooks I think I've ever heard in any song. <laughs> Corey Feldman writes better hooks than this. <clears throat> so the non-rap songs on this album are slightly more tolerable, but still nowhere near bordering on good. Baby Doll is a ballady doo-wop song Dee Dee wrote for his then-wife with his pitchy-ass singing and brilliant lyrics like created a work of art, you and I will never part. Like, man, this is uh, this is bordering on some Oliver Tree levels of lyricism, right? <laughs> Poor Little Rich Girl, despite its just its disjointed lyrics, is probably the best song on the album. It's got a rocking Dead Kennedys-esque guitar riff, and though at first Dee Dee's singing sounds gravelly in an almost cartoony way, by the time the chorus kicks in... Like, holy shit, it's the Ramones. Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is only track number four on the record, but you're already so thankful to hear something that sounds remotely good after sitting through three tracks of absolute garbage. The song The Crusher is apparently some kind of homage to like Rocky IV because he keeps talking about how he's going to beat up the Russian bear in the boxing ring with one of the most obnoxiously sung choruses I've ever heard. But then it occurred to me, like, Rocky IV came out in 1985, and this album came out in 1989. Like, did you just literally watch Rocky IV one day on TV in 1989 and go, Hey, I really like this movie. I'm going to write a song about it. So, I don't know. That's pretty much all I have to say about the album itself. The only listenable parts on the entire thing is the chorus of Poor Little Rich Girl, and that's simply because it just kind of sounds like a Ramones song. 
I wasn't able to find any sales numbers on this record, which probably means it only sold a couple thousand copies max. And the only people buying those copies would have to be confused diehard Ramones fans. I don't know. Dee Dee Ramone was a very ignorant individual, and it almost explains why his rap career never took off. First of all, Dee Dee refers to black people as Negroes. It's Gucci time, you know. I understood that. It's rising above oppression, you know. A Negro being able to buy a Gucci watch, great. And then he refers to himself as a Negro. You know, I'm a Negro too. And then later on, I guess when his album tanked, he said it was because he was not, in fact, a Negro? I couldn't do rap. I was trying. I don't know how. I'm not good enough to know. I don't... You know, I'm not a Negro or something. I don't know what it is. Now, I don't think it's very SJW of me to say that calling black people Negroes was a thing that Americans as a whole had stopped doing, like, I don't know, 30 years ago at that point. I'm not exactly sure what year those video clips were from. I'm pretty sure it was way after 1989 because Dee Dee was looking rough. Nonetheless... Remember all that stuff I said earlier in the video about how Dee Dee sounds like someone's dad who heard one rap album, knew nothing about the culture, and said, yeah, I can do that too. Yeah, those video clips were case in fucking point. I don't think Dee Dee was racist or a culture vulture. I just think he was a dumbass. A dumbass who was seduced by the hip-hop lifestyle, apparently. So, after this album flopped, D.D. returned to making punk music with various bands throughout the 90s until his death in 2002 from a heroin overdose. Looks like that rehab stint didn't take, sadly. Um, it's kind of bizarre, but, like, three-fourths of the original lineup of the Ramones died within the first four years of the new millennium. Joey died in 2001... Dee Dee died in 2002, and Johnny died in 2004. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more ideas for more obscure, crappy albums, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, enjoy the rest of your night.